What's going on, family? This is Scrapbook Boxing Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuffs Series Round 9 of the Colored Middleweight Champions. Now, we've gone over several colored champions. Al Walker, outstanding colored heavyweight champion. Dynamite puncher with either hand. He held the colored heavyweight champion for two years. Beautiful fighter was Al Walker. Magnificent Jerry Hayes, dynamite puncher. 1929, he was a light heavyweight champion. Colored division. Mr. Santiago Espero Guida, fast casting puncher. Dynamite. I have every last fighter's profile. These are dynamite fighters in the colored division. Outstanding James Battles from Tennessee. Dynamic light heavyweight. Held the colored light heavyweight championship for four months. Mr. Eli Borden. Master boxer. Great story behind this gentleman. Fantastic fighter. Carolyn Olano. Fantastic Cuban. Dynamic puncher. 1929. Now this man wasn't a champion, but he was a leading contender. Jack Doyle. Explosive puncher. These are some of the greatest African American fighters of all times. Fantastic fighter. Joe Hall, fantastic fighter. Fought like Joe Gaines. Now, a lot of these fighters I'm covering up. This is my African American Police Gazette. I have a thousand pages, all African American fighters. Fighters that's non existent are in this book. Please bear with me. Baby Johnson. These are just some dynamic fighters when you get to read their stories. Fascinating puncher as well. Joe Magani. These are all fighters from the 1929, 1924 to 1930. At that time, you had some unbelievable fighters. May 2nd, 1887. Harris Martin would be the first colored middleweight champion. He would be known as the Black Pearl. He declared himself colored middleweight champion when he fought Black Frank Taylor to a draw. Ed Benny, November 30th, 1891, San Francisco, Carolina. He fought Charlie Turner and claimed the title after defeating Harris Martin on February 29th. Joe Butler, November 13th, 1892, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, defeated Frank Craig in a title defense on March 16th, 1893, in Philadelphia. Frank Craig would be named the Harlem Coffee Cooler. February 20th, 1894, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he would defeat Joe Butler. He was an outstanding fighter from Harlem, New York. But he would vacate his title without defending it. Joe Byers, December 9th, 1897, Waterbury, Connecticut. Byers defeated Harry Peppers. Harry Peppers had great fights with Harry Smith. But he would defeat Harry Peppers, the Pacific Coast middleweight champion. And he moved up to the colored heavyweight championship division in 1898. Sam Lankford, fantastic fighter. 1907, 
Sam Lankford will move out of the middleweight division, release the colored middleweight championship. When he moved up to face Joe Jeanette for the vacant colored heavyweight championship of the world, Joe Jeanette would defeat Sam McVeigh. And Sam Lankford would become the new heavyweight colored champion. Sam Lankford would move up and face Panama Joe Gans. But he would defeat young Peter Jackson to be in line for that colored heavyweight strap. Meanwhile, Panama Joe Gans would defeat Jamaica Kid. And he would become the colored Middleweight champion of the world. Now, Panama Joe Gans would solidify that title by defeating George Madison at Madison Square Garden They would fight again at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx, New York. Tiger Flowers would become middleweight champion of the world when he defeated Harry Glebb. But he would first face Larry Eskridge. And Larry Eskridge would then become the official colored middleweight champion of the world. He would become the colored middleweight champion July 1926. Lavius was born 17 of June 1902 in St. Kitts. St. Kitts is a Caribbean island in the British West Indies. 1922 to 1929, he would fight some rugged fighters. Essence fought the colored middleweight champion, Panama Joe Gans, for his title on July 26, 1924 at Yankee Stadium. Defeating the champion, a unanimous decision. Now he had his wars with fighters such as Jack McVeigh, Harry Smith, Panama Joe Gans. But he was injusted and justly did wrong because he was matched up against fighters that were too heavy for him, that had more experience than he had. He held his own. But if for that reason, he would have 35 losses. He was a dynamic fighter. Great puncher with either hand. As you can see here, Paul Berlinbach stops Laurie Attridge. Larry Attridge was a middleweight. Poor Bell and Batch was a light heavyweight. And this was these type of injustices that gave the colored fighter the bad rap. Because poor Bell and Batch had over 15 to 20 pounds on Larry Estridge. This fight took place in Madison Square Garden. Berlin Batch was an outstanding fighter. But Larry Estridge didn't have the size or strength to go 15 rounds with a fighter such as poor Berlin Batch.
that Bell and Batch performance took place December 26, 1924. He weighed 155 and three quarter pounds. Bell and Batch, they say, he weighed 163 and three quarter pounds. He was closer to 170. He lost to him via technical knockout in the second round. His record was 38, 2, and 1 at that particular time. Eshard would, he would win his next three fights, and he lost to Frankie Score on March 13, 1925. And what was crazy about the fight selection Excuse my focus. For Larry Edwards. That he would win three fights before losing to Sammy Baker. June 1st, 1925. Sammy Baker was a heavyweight. Sammy Baker, Oakland, California. He stood six foot four inches. He had his eyes on Jack Dempsey. He was a heavyweight, facing a middleweight. Now the current middleweight champion, the distinction of that belt became extinct after Tiger Flowers would win the world Midweight Championship from Harry Greb. Tiger Flowers would dominate the division. But he had problems with fighters such as Harry Smith, Jack McVeigh. He moved up and challenged Harry Grab, 1926, for the World Midway Championship. Fascinating opportunity, and he would take advantage of it, and he would defeat Harry Grab and become the first African American Midway Champion of the world. Colored middleweight champion Jack McVeigh. Jack McVeigh from Harlem, New York, would dominate the Colored Middleweight Championship for over two years. He was a dynamic fighter, talk of the town. But he would meet an outstanding fighter. 54 and 0, 52 knockouts. His name was Harry Smith. Harry Smith was perhaps the greatest middleweight top five, in my opinion. I would say perhaps the top six greatest middleweight champion of all times. He would hold the Carter Middleweight Championship after defeating Jack McVeigh. He was supposed to be a dentist. His father owned half of Harlem. He didn't need the box. But an outstanding fighter he was. Outstanding fighter. Lorenzo Strickland would become colored middleweight and colored light heavyweight champion. Fascinating fighter. October 16th, 1942. An outstanding fighter out of Pittsburgh was banging away at an opportunity to earn a middleweight championship. 
knocking on the door was a young man who was Irish and African American, perhaps one of the greatest fighters of all times. I had this man top number two, middle of fighter. I got Holman Williams number one. Charlie Burley was born January 30th, 1915, Pensacola, Florida. He would move to Pennsylvania as a young boy. He died July 15th, 1967. He was a welterweight, middleweight, and four great light heavyweights. He would have his wars with Holman Williams. He would face Coco Kid. He was a dynamic fighter, was Charlie Burley. Charlie Burley would become the colored middleweight champion. He was an outstanding fighter. He fought great fighters such as Coco Kid, Eddie Booker, Bob Satterfield, Archie Moore, Marcel Sedan, Jake LaMotta. Quite a names. One hundred forty-five, thirty with eleven, thirty-five knockouts. Was the record? Of Holman Williams, and he would face him nine times. Phenomenal fighter was Holman Williams. For them all, I rank Holman Williams. The best murderous role fighter in group three.